This week on the podcast, Joey Janela responds to my mother's critique of his match with Zandig. Pentagon follows me on Instagram, kind of knows I have a podcast and wants to be on it. And my mom gives her thoughts on the Shockmaster. Enjoy the show. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. It's All right. How you guys doing? Come on in. Sit down. Relax. You're about to listen to the Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entry way into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I'm a Chicago native. I am a podcaster. I'm a proud podcaster. A man who is now learning a little bit more about how our legal system works. Most importantly, though, I... I'm a professional wrestler, and I am sitting here live in my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before we go any further, this is a fan and listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday, coltcomanet.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Just like HHLOBG did. And that user is going to email me their address, and I'm going to send out a DDT autograph. Other ways to support, tweet, Facebook, let the world know. The best way you can support, coltmerch.com, digitalcult.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads, wrestling dreams, children's book, keychains, micro brawlers, and so much more. Coltmerch.com, digitalcult.com. All right, I did say that uh, I'm learning about the legal system, obviously, uh, I, I, I'm, this is not going to be talked about until everything is over with. Don't get your hopes up this week or even probably next week. But I will say with the okay of my lawyer, due to court obligations, sadly I was unable to go to the United Kingdom and I apologize for all my fans in Edinburgh, London, and Doncaster. I'm also unable to wrestle in Tulsa, Oklahoma this coming Friday. I will be in New York City on Saturday because I can fly in and fly out. But with a negative comes a positive as I was able to have two shows within driving distance. Friday, Logan Square Auditorium, AAW, Saturday, Cleveland, Ohio. And the Friday show, it's an easy show. It's an Uber's drive away, a $4 Uber's drive, a $4 Uber pool. You think I'm going to get that Uber X? No way. I got to met. Listen. Uber pool, they rarely go to someone else's house and you get like two or three dollars off. It's the way to go. They have a new one where it's like even more or less expensive, but you got to walk a little bit to get the Uber. So for now, Uber pulled it to the show, hit up the locker room. And what do I see? Eddie Kingston smoking a cig right out the window. Well, in uh, AEW, I have my corner. Cabana has his corner. For some reason, they decided to fill it with a bunch of shit. And we had to move stuff around. It's the little things that upset you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean. So uh, Kingston's Corner composes of uh, an open window so he can smoke cigs. Yep. And a, a chair. And why don't you explain what you're dressed in right now? Sweatpants, no shirt on, no socks on, shoes. And what's this uh, voodoo? It's my rosaries, brother. From, Gotta believe in something. From the Jewish guy. <laughs> from that guy. You, you look so New York right now. I know. I wish I had my Tims here, but they're at home. They were dirty. What do you, what do you got this week? Just AEW this weekend, and then next weekend it picks back up to like two, three shows every weekend, and then we'll see what happens after that. All right. Everything good? Ah, as good as it can be. <laughs> you know, I'm still alive, still breathing. I get to see you. you know what I mean? It's always a good time to see you. I'm not just saying that because you have this microphone gimmick in my mouth. In your mouth, literally. In my mouth. It's in my mouth. What was your situation? You flew in this morning? You just came right here? Yeah. Yeah, I flew in. Them. You know, it's better than they usually used to fly us in 5 o'clock in the morning. We would land here like 6 or 7 and then have to sit in the hotel like lobby until we were allowed to check in. And you're just like, just get me to the bed already. So they've upgraded. They upgraded, yeah. <laughs> He's got us in. Who are you wrestling? Uh, Fred Yeha. The second time at AAW, I'm gonna bust him up. Please. Yeah, I got him. Yeah, you know I mean he's a he's a grappler. That's 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 that new thing now that guys do. And you're just like a. They don't work. They don't work. They don't brawl. They just grapple now. What's your thing. style? I have an idea. Oh, what's the idea? <laughs> I want to hear your idea. Your bro. style of wrestling is just piece of shit. I swear to God, I was going with that. <laughs> I'm saying uh, piece of shit style coming out of Yonkers, New York. There you go. I like it. I can put that on the shirt. ProWrestlingTees.com. I was going to say, I know a guy. <laughs> and that's the fun of these shows. There's a lot of great wrestlers on AAW. I always recommend them. 
They're going to have two shows right before All In Thursday and Friday, August 30th and 31st in the same building. I recommend you check those out if you're coming into town. One of the treats that are always in on these shows is Pentagon. I met Pentagon maybe two years ago. He really didn't speak any English. And now it's so cool that he's got a decent grasp of the English language. And that's from wrestling in the United States a lot and with the United States wrestlers. That's way better than my Japanese. I've been to Japan so many times and I couldn't even put a sentence together. But Pentagon is, is nailing his English. He follows me on Instagram. And I was like, all right, I'll follow him back. And I always see he like watches my videos and he likes my videos. And I always wonder if he has any clue what I'm talking about because it's always audio. And he came up to me and he's like, I think I know about your podcast. What's your podcast? And in a perfect world, Pentagon's probably got such a wonderful story. And in the past world, I would have loved to have Pentagon and Phoenix because I could only imagine their incredible story if, you know, if it was in Spanish and they were able to tell it all because, I mean, they've been... Speaking of, of, you know, court system stuff, they, you know, with AAA and all of that stuff, it's just, it's been a headache and they've been through so much. And, you know, they'll kind of tell me stories in the locker rooms of just like being held down by some of the older generation and able to break through somehow. And they're still looked as young boys, but they're doing such great work in America. And so in a perfect world, he'd be on and we do like 40 minutes of this great talk, Uh, but it's not a perfect world. And this is what you get. Hi, how are you? So you wanted to be on my podcast? Yeah, I follow your podcast. <laughs> no, I like it, I like it. Do you comprende? A little bit. <laughs> so you just see the videos, you just hear the videos and you say, I want to be on the podcast. Yeah, I see the videos, I see the matches, it's very, very good. I like your podcast, bro. Really? It's not a video podcast. No, only song. Only song? Yeah, only song. I hear, I try the, you understand? Okay, a little bit. Okay, it's okay. You come from Mexico every mo- every week? Yeah. Where? Mexico City, um, like, it's 30 minutes the city. Do you live in a, in a nice house? <laughs> no. No? No. <laughs> no. Why not? No, no. You're like, a big superstar. No, I'm mean a superstar. You just, maybe, maybe 10 years more, maybe a superstar. Right now, no. Do those, like, does Ultimo Guerrero have, like, a mansion? Yeah, Ultimo Guerrero is, is cool. Good house? Yeah, it's good, good very good. He has Rich the, man? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you, 10 years you'll be a rich man. Yeah, maybe 10 years. Okay. Maybe 10 years. One more ask me this question. Maybe it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank well, you. Update, update. <laughs> I shouldn't have said mansion. I should have said big house. No way he knew what mansion was. Why would I think... That this guy who barely speaks English would know the word mansion. Why would I say mansion? And he's just like pretending he understands. Uh, No way. (laughs) But again, in a perfect world, he'd be on and tell his wonderful story. A lot of us will trade stories back and forth about being on the road. That's what's happening in these locker rooms. Talk about what's happened to us. Well, a lot of us talk about our war stories. And Connor Braxton walks in, who is... Uh, a student of Seth Rollins. He lives in Iowa and he trains over there at the Black and Brave training camp, who also I don't plug them. I was going to say enough at all because I'm always plugging like WrestlePro and Jay Lethal and Seidel's doing stuff down there too. And I always forget Black and Brave, which it would be a great school. You should definitely go there if you live in the Midwest. And I see him smiling with a fucking, well, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll let him explain it. Oh, the worst. The worst. My worst nightmare is in is in your mouth right now. That doesn't it, sound right. I mean, it's it's out of my mouth now though. So I mean, now it's out of my mouth. Oh, that's so yeah. gross. You can't see it because you're listening, but I got my tooth knocked out. That's the worst. So tell me how it happened. Oh, I was in a match and I was just taking a DDT, and uh, my tooth hit the mat kind of weirdly. It broke. It snapped it right in half, and so it was only half. You got DDT'd? Yeah, yeah. You always missing a tooth. Yeah. yeah, it's the worst. That's why I'm intrigued by this right yeah. now. Um, Tinder game is way up though. Like girls, <laughs> girls seem to dig. Right now, aren't you? <laughs> so, so much, so much. So Tell yeah. Them about Phil Carr. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, half the tooth is gone. So every time I breathe it in, it was like the most excruciating pain in your life. So I had to get emergency dental surgery to get it removed. 
Uh, it was a quite a quite a costly bill, but you know, what are you gonna do? Professional wrestling, right? Did you did you throw your head down a little faster than usual? Yeah, or? I mean, you gotta make it look. I, I gotta go hard, and it, it, it went down pretty quick. I knew right away. I felt the crunch. Did you cry? Uh, a little bit on the inside because I knew that my pretty mouth was gonna be gone. It's the worst. It's the worst. Like it was. You said it, your biggest fear. Definitely my biggest fear because I love a good smile. But I mean. What are you going to do, right? I mean, anyone loves a good smile, but those are your teeth. I know. And you got to tell me, like, these were some good teeth. And I'm like, you know what? You're looking at me with a missing tooth. It is so gross. It's right really now. gross. I know. And every single girl, like, at first, they're kind of turned off, but then they're kind of intrigued. So, no, they're not. Uh, they say they are. So, I mean, maybe give it a try. See what happens. You can't walk through life like that. I, I won't. I, I, I'm going to get fixed later this week, hopefully. You have surgery this week? I got surgery on Thursday. To, get, to do what? To get a, a fake tooth permanently in there. Can you hear me like say fake, fake, fake? It's, it's really hard to talk without a front tooth. Oh yeah, God. that's the worst. You got dental insurance? <laughs> uh, maybe. No, I don't. You don't? No, I don't. But I have health insurance because when, like, when you're a wrestler, you definitely think that you get health insurance over dental insurance because you know, you're going to break a bone or you're going to break something. Right, but is this, is this covered through health insurance? No. This is all out of pocket. All out of pocket. Four grand. For the surgery? Four thousand dollars for both surgeries. I had one surgery to get it removed and one surgery to get it permanently fixed. Are you crying over that? Oh, way worse than the tooth. Way worse than the tooth. Oh. Good luck to <laughs> you. I appreciate it, Colt. I hope next time I see you we have a nice I got a permanent tooth instead of this fake one. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. And bless Connor, he says his Tinder game is strong even with his missing tooth. Not everyone is young and ready to go like Connor Braxton. Yeah, I'm talking about sex. Having sex from Tinder or wherever. With my sponsor, Blue Chew, you can increase your performance and get the extra confidence in bed. You see how I did that? BlueChew.com brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. Since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill, so you can be ready anytime, day or night. Blue Chew is prescribed online and shipped straight to your doctor in a discreet package. No more in-person doctor visits, no more waiting at the pharmacy, and no more awkwardness. Blue Chew is made in the U.S. and shipped directly, so they're cheaper than a pharmacy. Right now, we got a special deal for you people, my listeners, who want to jump in on this. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use the promo code COLT. Just pay the $5 shipping. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com, promo code COLT, and try it free. Blue Chew, the better, cheaper, faster choice. The show itself was great, by the way. I did wrestle. I guess I should say that. And always great to have the support of my uh, local team, my local people. There's always a little bit in my heart being like, when are they going to turn on me? And hate that I'm the Chicago guy. But so far, so good. No one's turned on me. That's where my head is if you can't figure out who I am by now. Why is that in my head? I don't know. But I had a great partner, Juice Robinson. We wrestled Matt Fitchett and Davey Vega, the besties. Very fun to have Juice uh, on my side. I thought we made a really nice tag team. I pitched to Rocky Romero years ago for uh, him and I to tag together in the Tag League in New Japan. It did not come to fruition. All of my politicking got me was a tag match with him at AAW, which I'm happy to do. And so afterwards, as we're talking, Sammy Callahan, who's just a mess of a human being, by the way, he's just going off in the locker room. And Juice starts telling me about a story about Sammy in, uh, in New Japan. They were a tag in the last uh, New Japan Tag Cup. And uh, as he's telling me the story, I'm like, hey, uh, hold on. Let's, uh, let's get this one on tape. Callahan is over here causing ruckus in the locker room. Being the tan- Tasmanian devil that he is. Like, what did he do? Destruction. In Japan, we, we did the tag league together. We went out to Rapungi, got really trashed. He couldn't hang because he's not a... Uh, it's not a very hard drinker. I had to send him home, blackout drunk in a cab. Next thing I know, I'm getting my hotel room door knocked on. I'm like, oh, sir, you vandalized a cab. It's like, blah, blah, blah. I didn't even take a cab. I took the train home. I sent Sammy Callahan back in a cab. And then all of a sudden, Sammy sticks his head out. It's like, yo, Juice, they're telling me I did something, but I have no clue what I did. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's your man right down there. And I closed the door and went to bed. Yeah, he must have just like... Hulk smashed. Wait, so in in his hotel room was a was a ca- was a cab door? No, he left. So the taxi brought him home. He went to get out, and I wasn't there. But I'm guessing he was like, "Oh, this door doesn't open," and he just fuck ripped the door handle off and was like, "Whoa!" And he left his book bag there. 
so they must have drove around, saw the door was broke, went back to the hotel, like, hey, is this one of your uh, patrons? Our door. <laughs> is this an American? Twenty bucks. Just a crazy American. Hey, Sammy, remember when you broke that door? Sammy, did you break a taxi door? It might have been Chuck Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he look. Still says he doesn't. We went out. We had a great night out on the town in Japan. We got drunk. Juice Robinson being the great adult, he was like, yo, you guys are too drunk. You guys got to go back. We went back in the fucking taxi cab, me and Chuck Taylor. Next thing I remember, we woke up in our rooms. This is what apparently happened. Because in taxis in Japan, no one told me this. You can't open the door until it physically opens. And I guess one of us tried to open the door and it didn't open. It's so not we were... a thing that, like, before you go to Japan, somebody's not like, all right, now you're going to go there and there's going to be taxis. <laughs> but the doors... Here's the ground rules. <laughs> the doors are not going to open from the inside. You just figure that out. <laughs> but little did I know, uh, Japanese policemen come to my room at 6 in the morning when I'm hungover as fuck. And then I was like, I don't know what's going on. I was then with I looked... Jews. I was with Jews. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Don't judge me. He ended up not getting any trouble, but yeah, he vandalized. They didn't, in Japan. They didn't not, find out about it? No, it's not vandalized. It's, hey, I was drunk. The door didn't open. I pulled too hard on the door, the car door. It broke. You know what I did? They said, hey, you broke the car door. You need to pay for it. I took the cash out of my pocket and paid them. Right? Can we just all agree that you're the same as Logan Paul? No. You're a mess. Yeah. You are a mess. You're just you're a third Paul brother. This is why I don't drink as much anymore. <laughs> oh, you don't? I'm just saying we had a that night cost us twenty five hundred dollars. Plus I Rick flared myself on a He was drinking this blow in the dark this blue They're glow in the dark. Tell me. I didn't know we were paying for it. Twenty five hundred dollars? Yes. Twenty five hundred dollar bar salmon Rapungi. I was like, dude, Sammy, you know these bottles of champagne are three hundred dollars, right? And he's like, ah, I don't care, I make enough money. And, like, ah. and then they ran my card, and because it was in Japan, my card got denied. But Juice Robinson, being a great friend, was like, yo, we don't want to get killed by the Nigerians. I'm gonna pay this bar tab, and then, but me being a good guy, have I not paid you back? Yeah. Well, my card started shutting me off too, cause like. You know, they thought I was being robbed. You <laughs> run one, it's like, sure. this is $2,000. This can't be right. $2,500 on my credit card. Like, just run my car, I don't care. They ran it, they're like, no, sir, this ain't running. I was like, it's because I'm American. Boys, I don't, I don't know how to live life. Mike, no, you do the right no, thing. You do the right thing. We did the wrong thing. Like, in Japan, like six weeks. <laughs> in Japan, it's like 7 Eleven. If I eat some pokey sticks, I think I'm a crazy man. Oh, shit. <laughs> I did have some beef. With Sammy Callahan, though, even though he's brought into the story to kind of explain his way, his drunken way in Japan, uh, he had an incident before the show, and he kind of went crazy all over the place, getting in fights, being the uh, the maniac that he is. And so I thought, ah, the podcast would be a, a good time to bring this up. Somebody threw a beer in the crowd, and somebody's beer landed on somebody else's merchandise. It was probably me. I do dumb shit all the time. Yeah, this is why no. everyone hates me. You didn't, <laughs> obviously didn't pick up on that. You up. threw your beer on my merch. I'm sorry. My yes. merch. How much do I owe you? And you're dead. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. So, funny story in England a couple months ago, and this person went on Twitter and bitched at me for being a horrible person. Some drunk girl came up to my table being drunk and stupid and spilled beer all over all my DVDs, over 108 by 10s over my shirts, ruined a bunch of shit. I got mad. I was like, get the fuck away from my table. Buy something right now. You, 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 you just cost me $800. You did that to me. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, I feel bad now because of it. And then she, this lady went on you Twitter and was like, Sammy was a dick. He made me buy his merch because I spilled beer on it. Well, you, you ruined $800 in merch. Well, good. Feel bad. I do. I'm sorry. What do I owe you? $800. $800. Well, give me, give me six right? weeks. Just give me a credit card. Yeah. Yeah. He never paid me. I didn't want the money. That's happened to me before. A fan has just spilled everything everywhere. And she was very, very drunk, but very nice about it. And like my carny businessman was just like, yep, make her give you all this money. But like my heart and soul was just like, ah, oh, you know, it happens. Don't worry about it. She's like, no, no, I'll give you money. I was like, you, this, this is money you wanted to spend on something else. Don't spend it on me. And um, yeah, I think that gave me some, some good juju in the end, I hope. I'll need it for this week, I'll be honest. And I took that good juju, I went to sleep, woke up early in the morning, and headed to Cleveland, Ohio for AIW, one of my favorite places of all time. It was the J-Lit weekend. JT Lightning, who was a legendary Cleveland wrestler and promoter, gave Punk and I one of our first breaks for Cleveland All Pro Wrestling, where we wrestled on the same show as The Stro. I don't like to brag or anything. 
And that afternoon was the Chandler Biggins Tag Team Tournament, the first annual. And, of course, Chandler Biggins, former owner of AIW, passed away last year. And uh, it's just nice that I can go there, hear his name. We all miss him so much. And the idea that we keep his name alive through this. And the same thing with JT. Like, it'd be easy. JT passed a couple of years ago, maybe five or six or seven years ago. But... We keep him in mind. You know, we're not naming this tournament anything else. We're keeping JT alive. We're keeping Chandler Biggins' name alive in the scene through these tournaments and through these shows. It's always a star-studded locker room back there. And one of my buddies, Cheech, he came up to me and said, Hey, I've heard the new podcast, but uh, I got a question for you. And I said, Great. I'll hit record and you can ask away. Yes, yes, yes. So with the new uh, motif you're running with on this podcast... Okay, now if I knew what motif meant, I, I would be able to answer. Okay, your new style, your new approach. Mm. Now you still do the entryway of saying it's the entryway into the minds, the souls, the hearts... But, and the lives. And the lives, but isn't it really now an entryway into your life interacting with those people as opposed to their stories? Yeah, but Chichif, I want to know how your drive to the show was today. It was, I did, well, today it was simple. We were here last night. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. What about the day before? Uh, long, uh, not a lot of construction, which I like. I got up early. I worked a half day of work and then left, and then I had to pick up some young boy who's half my age. Wrestling is creepy, but appropriate in these things. But, yeah, I finally had a kid who's 14 years my age on the road with me, and I'm like, only in wrestling. It, isn't Colin here? No, yeah, Colin, Colin was on the road with us. He's, he's hanging out with the missus. Because you, you and Colin Delaney usually travel together. Yes. But Jay Lit Weekend, is, he tends to get a little dramatic, so I was okay with uh, being on my own. And who's this young kid? Eh, he doesn't need to have a name right now. Why? How did he... What did he... Where do you Where do you find these guys? Come on. Wrestling schools, kids show up. They think, oh, blah, blah, blah. want to come shake hands. And he's still wide-eyed. He's like, everybody here is so nice. Oh, wrestling so great. Everybody's so nice. No drama. I was like, you don't know nothing. Did you want somebody on the road with you, or he just scampered uh, in? No, no. He asked to come, and, you know, I got a four and a half hour drive home he's gonna keep me awake this ride home okay now i know so much more about your life yeah see see but oh i see what you did there you see. did an entryway in a, you son of a i was right you were wrong he walks away in shame i don't know if that was a setup to get on the show or not but i'm glad i could have cheech on my show he's always so fun to talk to big joe rogan fan likes the comedy podcasts he's in the circle he gets it he's one of you you know who's not one of us Somebody on their own fucking page, and not Ethan Page, he was on the show, the bad boy, Joey Janela. Now, a couple weeks ago, my mom watched where Zandig threw Joey Janela off a building, threw a truck, threw a couple of tables that were on fire. She did not like it. You better believe that Joey Janela heard it. He tweeted about it. He wasn't happy about it. I'm pretty sure he was joking, but whatever. Very fun. Made for, made for some fun banter. So I caught up with Joey about not only my mom's uh, actions, but also the weekend festivities. He's a weird one, this Joey. I understand her, uh, you know, her problems with my, my stunt that I committed to a couple years ago, but I don't like people bad-mouthing me. I, I don't care if it's your mom, Colt. I better never run into her. I'm going to make her take me to her house, and I'm going to smash her china cabinet. That's the house I grew up in. I'm going to smash every antique plate she has. I don't think we have any good china. I'll, I'll get china delivered there and then break it. And then she can pretend it's her china. I, I don't want to break the news to you, but china's passed away. That's uh, sad. Uh, my favorite china memories, um, her and Jeff Jarrett. Oof. When she really she really got him with that that shit. That's a good call. You seem more sad than, than, than wound up. Yeah, I really miss China. <laughs> She's the ninth wonder of the world, you know. I try. She she didn't want me to treat her like a woman. She didn't want me to treat her like a man. Really miss you, China. All right. Tell me what happened with you and Jeanette yesterday, because I wasn't able to make it at the show. You might as well show your mom that match too. <laughs> <laughs> See what I can do to a to a uh, senior citizen. Uh, his his ankle was fucked. He was fucking bashed up his ankle and. Uh, he tried to run this super indie match with me, and then it just turned into one of the wildest matches of my career. I'm sure someone will watch it and say it's probably the worst match they've ever seen in their life, but also at the same time, someone will watch it and say it's the greatest match they've ever seen in their life. He was really in bad shape, and apparently he can't get out of bed today. I 
did a couple dives to him on a table that didn't break, and that was shoot. We didn't even call that. That was on the fly. He just kind of had to lay there, and uh, he couldn't get off the table anyway because his ankle was fucked up. Why is he doing that stuff? Because I kind of forced him to. <laughs> Do you feel good about yourself? I don't know. It's 2018. I'm, I don't want to have the basic, uh, you know, Carney 10 punch match with Marty Jannetty. I want to bring Marty Jannetty to uh, the black hole that exists in my, in my brain, in my wrestling career, bringing wrestling back to the dark ages. And I brought Marty to the dark ages, and hopefully he's not dead. Let's hope, huh? He could be dead. He's not here. Who do you, who's out there that you're like, oh, man, I want to have one of these matches with? Because I was here in this building when you and Scott Norton tore it up. Scott Norton's awesome. Uh, trying to think. Uh, like, you know who I was watching the other day who I'd love to wrestle with? Barry Horowitz. Barry Horowitz. That's a good one. I don't even know if he's alive anymore. He's still. I think he still kind of will wrestle if you pay him enough money. Well, that's good to know for spring break next year. Yeah. You know, that could be very over. And thank you for that information. Uh, I really wanted to book China, but... All right. I'm sorry about my mom's... Uh, yeah, that's how... This, this really went off the rails. Well, I, I, I wanted to talk about Marty and my mom, so... Uh, your mom, she's probably hanging out with Jim Cornette right now. Right? Oh. Is that I, what's going on? I'm going to disown her. Is that what's going on There's right now? So listen, Marty Gennetti, he needs surgery. Maybe Joey's going to start the Kickstarter. He said Chris Jericho hit him up and he wanted to start it with him. Or Marty could put the whole thing on his credit card. And my sponsor, Lightstream, would be perfect for him. Credit card consolidation loans. That means you can start paying less interest on your credit card loan. Lightstream rewards customers who have good credit with a great interest rate at no fees. Get a credit card consolidation loan from 5.49% APR with AutoPay. 100% application online, save thousands of dollars of interest, and you can get your funds as soon as today. Maybe you're putting your wrestling school tuition on your credit card. Maybe your all-in experience is going on that credit card. Maybe you're doing a mad shopping spree over at Colt Merch. These are the times when Lightstream will come in handy. My listeners, you guys, you get an additional interest rate discount on top of Lightstream's already low rates. The only way to get this discount is by going to lightstream.com slash Colt, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash Colt. I'm going to do this part fast. Here we go. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount available only when you select auto pay prior to loan funding. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com for important information about limits on Lightstream loans and same day funding. Oh, how'd I do on that? They said I could speed it up if I wanted to. I guess that's a trick of the, uh, the radio world. You could speed that up, but I wanted to do it regular and talk really fast. Like I was some kind of professional. Hopefully I did it justice. One person I hope isn't in uh, any kind of credit card debt is Hornswoggle. God knows how much money he's made. He also ran a show in uh, Green Bay area, drew about 2,500 people. He's got to be doing good. He was on the show in Cleveland, sitting right next to me. His bags were right next to me. Although the, in Cleveland, there's this giant locker room. It's basically the same size as the arena, but just downstairs. Imagine like your high school cafeteria. There we were, just two peas in a pod, just hanging out. Hi. Are you too, too, you too tired right now? No, I'm good. You sure? Yeah. What did you do? I, I, had to, I, you know, I did my best to try to put Ethan, Ma- Ethan Page look good. <laughs> was I know. He successful? Yeah, he did okay for a young kid. But, uh, no, it was, he needs to work on his upper chest and shoulders? It's an upper body business, obviously, and me being in the shape that I am, he can take some notes. Yeah, you're all lower body. Well, yeah, for midgets, it's a lower body business. You can't say that word. Yes, I can. I'm one of them, so it's okay. One of what? Midget. You can't say that. Yeah. You, I mean, you kind of can, but I, it's really okay for me. Tell me about your, uh, I don't want to be like. Tell me about what? Wrestlingscoops.net. Okay. That was uh, Saudi Arabia. Awesome. Oh, Jesus Christ. You met Jesus Christ over there? Yeah. Saudi Arabia was awesome. What happened? So uh, tell, you, got a, you got a phone? Take me through it. I got a phone call the week before WrestleMania. Week, though, like WrestleCon week. So you've been sitting on this a while. Yeah. Who'd you tell? John Thorne, <laughs> John Thorne, Hawkins, and uh, TJ Tyson Kid. Okay. And it's uh. And your kid? I didn't even tell my kid. No, I didn't even tell him. <laughs> like legitimately, I, I, he knew that I was going somewhere, but didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And he, de- he then he found like he realized when I was getting my old Leprechaun gear out. He's like, "What are you doing? You don't wear this." I go, ah, "I'm going to Saudi Arabia." He goes, "Greatest Royal Rumble." Yeah. Oh. Okay. 
so yeah, I get the call, and then uh, a couple weeks later, they I wake up on a Sunday morning to the office WWE office asking if I can have my old Hornswoggle gear. Then it's instantly, oh no, I haven't worn in 10 years, and I'm not 21 year old shape Dylan anymore. So I try to put it on, and it barely fits. <laughs> and it's uh, but it it was crazy. It, it everyone went into it. I think like it was gonna be an overseas live event, and it was WrestleMania B. Like that's the weirdest part about it. It was so huge, and uh, I heard the Prince was like asking for midgets. Like he wanted. You can't say that word. He can't. Okay. He can't. But he yeah, that Jerry Lawler and Jr. Yokozuna. Yeah. And the Ultimate Warrior. They produced three of the five. Who was their fake Ultimate Warrior? There wasn't one. Mojo. I'm gonna say Mojo. <laughs> It uh, it was just nuts. Like, so you've always been so f- you've been friendly to them, like, on interviews and podcasts, and you never like you're never like bashing them or anything. And, but you you haven't heard from them in a while. Two years. Right. I haven't heard anything in two years. Um, I thought it was never gonna happen again. Like, you and I have become, I think, more personable. And I don't know if that's the term, but I vent to you a lot more lately, and I never thought it would happen again. They were done. They were over with. And I think I felt not jaded at the end, but kind of jaded. And it's because I wasn't, I literally heard nothing for the last year and a half of my career there. So I was sitting home and I was like, oh, you're never going to hear from me again. And I was okay with that. And then it came up and awesome. You, you seem to be one of those guys who will like, hey, 100th anniversary of Raw or of this. Like, oh, you're the perfect guy to like, ah, we'll throw him in there. I'll get a quick pop. But that didn't happen. The Raw 25. Right. I was kind of like hurt that I didn't do anything. Yeah. Like that was... That one hit me a little bit, and then, but then I realized like there was a good amount of people that weren't on it that could have been. So this is probably a good sign of like, oh, they don't hate me. If they need me, I'm here. Right? Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Like, and and then like like you said, I have nothing bad to say about what they gave me. They made my kid the proudest kid in the world, and they made me let me let me live my dream for ten years. Don't have much bad to say. Like, so for them to call me back. It's awesome. It really is. I mean, you still have AIW. You got that AIW running yet? Got that, I got that AIW. I came to the AIW big show. It's, it's fun. Like, I, I did that, and it's awesome to hear the response after it, and you realize how big, I mean, just how big that machine is. You don't realize it when you work there, I don't think. And then when, you do, when you're not there and you do a little thing, it's, and then the machine is just... What about coming back to the Indies, getting a little push ski at the old merch stand? No, uh, they. Uh, the last month, it's you were great in the Rumble. You weren't eliminated, but you were really like awesome. But not. Oh, I'll buy your picture. No, no, no. Right. I need a picture of me in the Rumble. That's oh, that's what I need. Right. Then it will be. <laughs> we'll get that for you. I'll print that right up. There we go. My friends at Pro Wrestling Tees can do that for you. Thank you, buddy. You uh, you've always been a, uh, an ear for me and a place a guy to vent to, and I appreciate that. Well, you're doing it on a podcast now. So. Well, I also yeah. There we go. Not so. It's not just to you now. It's worldwide. It's to many. Yes. <laughs> To all 17 listeners. <laughs> and I want to make one thing very clear. These AIW weekends, the J-Lit weekends, they're kind of madness, right? Last year on the live podcast, you heard a story about Joey Janela, I think, pile driving some fans in the hotel room. And there's one person that wants to keep this tradition alive, one very important person. His name is Little Guido. We had done a little podcasting before, like an hour earlier, and like my audio for some reason didn't work, so I was like, oh, I'll just grab him again real quickly. And an hour did a lot of difference <laughs> as uh, he went and drank some magic juice or something. So I thought I'd end the show on a nightcap with little Guido. But now I've been drinking, so I don't know if I could do this. Oh, you have been drinking. Uh, are you smart? No, but you sound a little... <laughs> are you still willing to be on the air? Eh, you know, who cares? <laughs> I haven't seen you. The only time I see you is at AIW. Yeah, well, I'm not doing too much anymore because of uh, my injuries and stuff like that. So, what happened? Yeah, I took an F5, which I would never normally do. You're not was, an F5 taker. No, no. Like I said, though, I did wrestle Brock Lesnar, and he gave me the F5. No, no, no. When I wrestled Brock Lesnar, there was no such thing as an F5. So. When did you wrestle Brock Lesnar? It was a six-man tag. It was in Madison Square Garden, actually. And it was, um, I, think, I think it was me, Chuck, and Johnny versus, I think it was him and uh, Undertaker, and I want to say APA, Kurt Angle. Could be named Kurt Angle. But you can Google it, so there's no bullshit here. You wrestled Brock Lesnar in the garden. Uh, yeah. 
And now you're here at Mount Carmel. At Mount Carmel. Love this place. Mount Lady, The Lady of Mount Church. What is this place? Uh, Lady of Mount Carmel. I like it, actually. What's I, better? I, what, the, what's what better? The AIW venue or Madison Square Garden? Fuck Madison Square Garden. AIW. <laughs> Love John Thorne. Love John Thorne. <laughs> so you are you had a, a broken MCL? Uh, no, chair in my MCL. And the funny thing is, actually, last year at this time, I was wrestling super crazy, and I, I uh, broke my ankle. So a year later, I'm back here today, but I broke my ankle here a year ago from today. You're just a mess. Yeah, I'm a mess. I'm an old man. I'm How, old, How old are we now? I'm 46. 46. You look good. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to be doing it when I'm 46. Yeah. How old are you? 38. Okay. Eight more years. Eight more years. I'm sure you'll be doing it. I'm positive I'll Even be doing it. I always say I'm not going to be doing it no more, but I just fucking keep doing it. Why wouldn't you? I'm an idiot. And you like coming here. You like like having some booze. I love. John hooks me up, takes care of me. He's a very good uh, how, guy. How many deep are you now? Yeah, since well, let's get this straight. Okay. I came in yesterday. Okay. So I would say at least uh, I would say about thirty-eight deep. Thirty-eight deep. Thirty-eight deep. And you're you're feeling good. I'm feeling good right now. The, the, I, as you can see that the knee doesn't even hurt anymore. No. Uh, uh, what did I have a bad knee? I don't even. <laughs> Fuck it. The best. The best. Little Guido is the best. A lot of you happen to think my mom is the best. Coming with her opinions about professional wrestling. One of you made her watch the Shockmaster, and she did. She'll tell you all about it right after these plugs end. Upcoming events. All right, the best way you can support ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast, also slash Colt Cabana. My storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of this show, they're ad-free on StitcherPremium.com slash Colt. Use the code Colt, get a free month. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe a promoter want to put me on your upcoming show or convention. I got a YouTube channel. I also have a website, ColtCabana.com. That's where you can send something to my P.O. Box. Also, every week, I'm going to pick one person five stars and review the podcast and I will send you out a Japanese ticket signed by me to a Japanese DDT wrestling show. Upcoming Saturday, June 2nd, New York City. I'm doing commentary, ROHwrestling.com. Friday, June 8th, Rahway, New Jersey, WrestleProOnline.com. Saturday, June 9th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, ChikaraPro.com. June 15th, 16th, 29th, 30th, Dallas, San Antonio, Baltimore, Fairfax, Virginia. I'll be doing commentary for ROHwrestling.com. Saturday, June 23rd, Marionette Park, Illinois, AAWrestling.com. And August 3rd through the 26th, I'll be in Edinburgh, Scotland, all month, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Go to edfringe.com to reserve tickets. I'm also going to be doing a bunch of wrestling shows out there, but if you're in the area and you can get me back by 11 p.m., I will be happy to be on your show. Let your local promoter know. Intro music by the ukulele teacher on YouTube. Outro music by Super Fun Yeah Yeah Rocket Ship. Podcast cover art and design by Jimmy Lee. Photo by James Muscle White. Thanks to Eddie Kingston, Pentagon, Connor Braxton, Sammy Callahan, Juice Robinson, Cheech, Joey Janela, Hornswoggle, and Little Guido for being a part of the show this week. Feel free to send them a tweet. Show them some love. Show some love to our sponsors, HighSpots.com, a VOD service with all those PWGs and $5 wrestling, plus AMA knee pads, gear, masks, a wrestling ring, and me, Marty, Trent, and Dustin talking about our wieners, OneHourTees.com. They help run ProWrestlingCrate.com. They also help run ProWrestlingTees.com. That's where you can support your favorite independent wrestler directly. All right, here we go. Hashtag Ask Cabana Mom. That's where you tweet me at Cole Cabana. You use the hashtag Ask Cabana Mom and you ask something that you want to know from my mom. A video, a picture. Can't be too uh, too deep in the wrestling world. She doesn't know that much. She just knows what she sees. And this week at Texas High Flyer asks, could you hashtag Ask Cabana Mom for her thoughts on the infamous Shockmaster? So I sent her the link. She gave it a watch. And here she is. Hello, it's Mama Cabana in the blistering heat from my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. When that shockmaster made his debut through the wall, I don't know if he was trying to be funny or if that was his plan, but I thought it was totally ridiculous. As a retired teacher, if I stumbled into my classroom on the first day, I'd be the laughing stock of the school. And I think he's the laughing stock of the whole wrestling federation, whichever one he wrestled for. I don't know if he made his debut and that was it. 
if he ever won a match, but he just didn't seem to fit his image. He's called the shock master. I guess he shocked everybody with that entrance, but to me, he looked more like a glittery stormtrooper. I'm curious to know if he ever made it in wrestling, if he ever wrestled Sid Vicious. I think that's who was screaming at him, who it seems to me all these men dye their hair blonde to look young, but uh, it's not very appealing. It's so fake looking. But that's my thoughts on the Shockmaster. He really was shockingly not funny. So until next week, it's Mama Cabana saying thanks. So, Mom, you do know there's some uh, pictures of me on the Internet, a young Colt Cabana with bleach blonde hair. I thought I thought that was going to be my big break. I mean, I was no Sid, but I was, I was trying to get there. I was playing a lot of softball at the time. All right, this has been the Art of Wrestling for Colt Cabana. I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks.